Hi everyone, my name is Tim Gardner and I'm a gastroenterologist at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center in New Hampshire. My primary focus of the patients I care for are patients with acute and chronic pancreatitis. And I've had a lot of experience with using medical cannabis for the treatment of symptoms related to um, chronic pancreatitis and acute pancreatitis. So it's really my pleasure here to be able to speak to you today about uh, these conditions and, and how medical cannabis can be used to, to help alleviate a lot of the symptoms that, that patients experience with these diseases. So I'll start out with what is medical cannabis? Medical cannabis is just medical grade marijuana. So many states, I believe up to about 30 now, allow uh, patients to obtain medical cannabis uh, from licensed dispensaries within the state. So the only difference between medical cannabis oftentimes and cannabis that's not associated with a medical uh, group or a medical clinic is that medical cannabis is something that you can only obtain through state law and it's only available at certain dispensaries. So again, that's the difference between medical cannabis and cannabis that, for example, is not associated with a medical group or medical regulation. What does science say about medical cannabis for pain management? So unfortunately, not a lot of research has been done in general about medical cannabis for pain management. And the reason of, for that is because the Food and Drug Administration and the, and the Drug Enforcement Agency uh, of the United States doesn't generally sponsor clinical research into the use of medical cannabis and medical cannabis for pain. So in order for us to perform research uh, with medical cannabis, we oftentimes have to look back on patients who have already had the use of medical cannabis uh, for pain. In terms of pancreatitis, there's very few studies. In fact, the only one I know of is one that we uh, performed here at, at Dartmouth, where we looked back at patients who were prescribed the medical cannabis for treatment of their pain and nausea symptoms. And we looked to see patients who were prescribed medical cannabis versus those who weren't to see if this had any appreciable impact on their pain and their amount of hospitalizations and their nausea. And what we did find is that patients who used medical cannabis for treatment of their chronic pancreatitis and recurrent acute pancreatitis symptoms had less of a need for opiate use, less hospitalizations, and overall an improved quality of life. So we basically believe that medical cannabis is helpful uh, used in a prospective way, meaning going forward for patients with a lot of these symptoms, but we haven't been able to study it as much as we want just because of the regulations around using uh, science to, to study medical cannabis because of the way it's looked at by the Drug Enforcement Agency and the Food and Drug Administration. So another question is, is medical cannabis an appropriate option for pancreatitis patients to manage their symptoms? I feel very, very strongly that it is. It is. I think it's actually one of the most important and effective ways for patients to manage their symptoms. Uh, in the state of New Hampshire, in fact, it is thought to be such a good use of medication for this indication that of the 20 diseases that are uh, basically used for medical cannabis in New Hampshire, one of them is chronic pancreatitis. So our state believes that medical cannabis is a very effective way to help treat symptoms related to chronic pancreatitis. And it's probably for several reasons. One is that there is some pain relief that's associated with using medical cannabis. And medical cannabis becomes in many different formulations, including edibles, including vaping, including smoking it, even including salves and bombs that people can use. So there are a lot of ways that they can use it. So it helps with pain. It also helps very much with nausea. It's a very good in many patients anti-emetic or anti-nausea medication that, that people can use. I think it also helps with relaxation. So many patients who live in chronic pain or have painful episodes uh, appropriately get very anxious uh, about these pain episodes. So this is a very good anti-anxiety medication. And finally, I think the most important thing that medical cannabis can do for certain patients is it can really help to stimulate their appetite and allow them to, to maintain weight. So for those reasons that it helps with pain, it helps with anxiety, it helps with nausea, and it also helps with uh, stimulation of appetite, I think medical cannabis is a very, very effective medication for um, acute and chronic pancreatitis. In fact, it, it's so much uh, to my mind, an important medication that oftentimes what I will do is prescribe people medical cannabis much more readily than I will prescribe them opiates because I think it's a much more uh, important medication for, for treatment. 
So what symptoms can medical cannabis help alleviate for, for pancreatitis patients? I, I covered that a little bit. Again, the major things that I think medical cannabis can be used for patients are pain, nausea, the anxiety associated with pain, and then the need to stimulate the appetite. I know of no greater medication uh, than medical cannabis that can be used for those different indications in this disease. Is there a right dose and strain for pancreatitis pain? So this is a really good question. And a lot of it really depends on the individual. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of different formulations that people can use for medical cannabis. Again, it can be inhaled, it can be swallowed or ingested, it can be rubbed on the skin. There's, there's many different types and every patient is a little bit different. So for example, someone who has bad lung disease, obviously we wouldn't want them to be inhaling medical cannabis to help. Other patients who get more benefit from eating and, and really need to stimulate their appetite, maybe an edible would be a much, much better uh, choice. And the strain really depends and, and the type of medical cannabis depends on what that patient is interested in. And that's one of the great things about the dispensary system that we have in New Hampshire. I am certainly not an expert at the intricacies of medical cannabis and the different strains, but the folks who work in the dispensaries are. And many of my patients will go to the dispensaries and say, hey, I am really having a problem with nausea. Is there a strain that you can give me that'll be really, really helpful specifically for nausea? And that might be one that has, for example, a little more CBD oil as opposed to the THC, because it's the THC that tends to have that analgesic effect as opposed to the CBD. Other patients may have severe chronic pain, and they may have a hard time uh, with that as their cardinal feature of their disease. And so a THC might be a much better alternative uh, for them to use, a THC-based formulation as opposed to a CBD. And other patients may be a combination of the two. So it's really, really important that when you go to a dispensary and, and talk to the folks who are dispensing this for you, that you describe your symptoms and describe to them what you're really looking for and what the most important thing for you to have is. So there are oftentimes many, many different strains of cannabis. There are hundreds out there, but really the local knowledge that you'll have at your dispensary will probably the, be the best way to determine which is the appropriate strain for you. It's very important, I think, for people to recognize first and foremost that for, at a federal level, medical cannabis is not legal. Now, many different states have legalized uh, cannabis and medical cannabis, but the important thing to remember, the big legal disclaimer, is that from a federal perspective, it's not something that's legal. So you'll always have to keep in the mind, the back of your mind about that. Uh, the other thing we know is that one should never do anything that could put others or yourself at risk when using medical cannabis. So those should not drive when you're using medical cannabis. You should not operate heavy machinery. You should not uh, make any major life decisions uh, when you're using this because it can alter sensorium and alter consciousness and maybe not give you the same decisions that you would typically have if you weren't using medical cannabis. Uh, so that's really, really important. And then you also have to think about other issues such as if you have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or emphysema, that would be something where you would not want to inhale medical cannabis. You know, you probably want to use an edible. Uh, for example, if you have very severe nausea and vomiting and you try an edible, that may be a little bit more difficult for you to tolerate. You may be a better candidate for having um, some um, inhaled uh, cannabis. But I think the biggest disclaimer, again, that, that, I, that I've mentioned already is that from a federal perspective, medical cannabis is not legal. Depending on which state you're in, have various laws in regards to medical cannabis. And as, as I said, I think about 30 uh, states currently have medical cannabis uh, within their legal system that's acceptable. And certainly within all those states in which it's legal, there's various rules as far as whether you can produce your own, whether you have to get it from a dispensary, whether or not you have to pay taxes. So that's important to know depending on what you're, what you're doing in your own state. The other thing I always encourage my patients from a legal perspective to do is that if you are in a state in which medical cannabis is available, it's very important to uh, register for that state program because even if you're growing your own or you obtain it somewhere else, it's very, very important, I think, to have the, the coverage that you have to be part of your state system. So I'd encourage you to do that. But in general, if you really watch the legal aspects as we talked about and you don't do any medical major decisions or operate heavy machinery or drive when you're on the cannabis, typically you're going to be a-okay. And I really recommend it as a effective means of helping to treat the pain from acute and chronic pancreatitis.
another question is, what are the risks of long-term cannabis use? I don't know particularly of any specific risks of medical cannabis to the pancreas itself over long-term use. I think typically we would caution patients to use uh, judicious use of it, meaning you don't want to overindulge. You certainly don't want to use medical cannabis for secondary gain. So for example, if you're, if you're using it to treat your, your pain symptoms, that's as far as you want to go. You don't necessarily want to use it to get high, so to speak, um, because that's, I don't think, going to help you in the long term. There is probably some degree of addiction uh, related to medical cannabis over the long term. Um, again, uh, this is all something that I think most of us are somewhat cautious about and somewhat nervous about occasionally. But in general, I think the risks, if you have severe chronic pancreatitis, certainly outweigh the benefits of a risk of addiction or a risk of, of misuse. But I think it's really, really important that, that you remember uh, that it is oftentimes used as a hallucinogen, used sometimes as a drug of abuse. So you have to keep that in mind when you're using medical cannabis. But having said that, I do think, again, it remains a very effective treatment for most patients with chronic pancreatitis.